effective management of third stage of labor, AMTSL, is evidence-based low-cost intervention used to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. There are three components for this. The first component is giving women 10 units of oxytocin intramuscularly in the upper thigh within one minute of the childbirth, preferably by a qualified assistant. You have to check whether there is no other baby in sight before giving the injection. The second component is a control cord traction. Place the clamp near the woman's perineum to make control cord traction easier. Place the palm of the other hand on the lower abdomen just above the woman's pubic bone to assess the uterine contractions. Wait for the uterine contraction and only do control cord traction when there is a contraction. With the hand just above the pubic bone, apply external pressure on the uterus in an upward direction towards the woman's head. At the same time, with your other hand, pull with firm, steady tension on the cord in a downward direction. Follow the direction of the birth canal. Avoid jerky and forceful pull. Placenta does not descend during 30 to 40 seconds of control cord traction. Do not continue the pull on the cord. Once the placenta and membrane delivers, the third component of AMTSL is massaging the uterus. Massage the uterus stimulates the uterine contraction and helps to prevent PPH. The woman herself could be taught how to massage her own uterus and ask her to call if her uterus becomes soft. This procedure should be continued once in 15 minutes for the first hour or two. Thank you. This is the postpartum hemorrhage prevention box. We have three compartments. Compartment A has airway and oxygen mask. Compartment B has gloves, IV fluid, preferably a ringer lactate, IV cannula number 18 and 16 couch, three way, syringes 20 cc, 10, 5, 2 cc, drip set. Vacuum tainers, EDTA, plain and sodium citrate, scissors, cannula, fixator, micropore plaster, one inch. Compartment C has polycatheter, euro bag. 10 cc syringe and distilled water. This tray is a must in every labor room. Thank you. Condom tamponade. The materials used to assemble the condom catheter include condoms, preferably two, black silk, a nelleton catheter, a Foley's catheter can also be used, but a Nelleton catheter is firm and is preferred. Sterile gauze, an IV. Let us see how a condom catheter is made for tamponade purpose. The open end of the condom is loaded onto the thumb. It is preferred to use two condoms instead of one and the Nelleton catheter is threaded into the condoms. The condom and the Nelleton catheter together 
are fixed with sterile black silk. It is preferable to make this ligature quite tight so that there is no leakage of saline later. Yes, the first knot has been put, the first ligature has been secured. Another ligature can be inserted in order to secure the first one. A balloon tamponade can be used for a variety of causes including uterine atony which is the most common cause, coagulopathy, retained placenta, placenta previa and placenta creta. The tamponade involves inserting a rubber or silicone balloon into the uterine cavity and inflating the balloon with normal saline. The balloons could be Sengstaken, Blakemore, Buckery balloon. The intrauterine balloon is believed to act by exerting inward to outward pressure that is greater than the systemic arterial pressure to prevent continual bleeding. Balloon tamponade can be used either alone or in combination with other surgical interventions including internal iliac artery ligation or the Beelin suture. Now the condom so assembled is connected to an IV drip set. The slightly inflated condom catheter is now gently placed inside the uterine cavity with the help of forceps. It is then filled with 250 to 500 ml of saline. In most cases inflation of the condom can be stopped when there is resistance to more saline or when bleeding stops. The time required for PPH to be controlled after placement of the condom catheter is anywhere between 4 to 15 minutes. Once cessation of bleeding is confirmed, vagina is packed with sterile roller gauze to keep the condom in place. All along, an oxytocin drip is run concurrently and at least for 6 hours after placement of the condom catheter. The condom catheter is removed 6 to 72 hours later depending on the bleeding and the patient's general condition. Friends, what the doctor is holding is a non-humanitic anti-shock garment NASG which is made of neutron weighing just 1.5 kg. When it's applied, it exerts 45 mm pressure to the lower half of the body. It reverts and prevents hypovolemic shock in postpartum hemorrhage. It allows safe transfer from labor room to the operation theater or to the higher center. First, explain to the patient, you are going to make her wear this suit as a life-saving method. Open the garment and place the central dotted line against the patient's spine. You can turn the patient. the upper border at the level of the lower border of the last rib. Now go to the segment 1 which covers the ankle, strap it, strap it to check whether it is tight enough. Then to the segment 2 to the calf and then segment 3 to the thigh. the knee uncovered to enable her to bend the knee. Two people can apply the leg segments. The pelvic and abdominal segment should be applied by a single person. Segment 4 goes all around the body, lower border at the level of the lower border of the pelvic bone. Segment 5 has a small foam ball which sits over the umbilicus when applied and cover it with segment 6. Check with the patient whether she is comfortable and able to breathe well. If not, loosen the 5 and 6 at 
again and reapply. If she continues to bleed, give eutrotonic and insert your hand under the segment five and six. Massage the abdomen. When and how to remove and to clean, disinfect, dry, fold and store for a reuse and how to manage toileting, vaginal operation and laparotomy with NASD in C2 will be demonstrated at the workstation. Thank you.